Tonight, hundreds of people living at that homeless camp near I-90 in Freya will not be clearing out anytime soon. That's according to the Washington Department of Transportation. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us here for Kremchi News First at Four. I'm Whitney Ward. In the latest chapter of this ongoing battle over the tent city in the East Central neighborhood, today the state is firing back at the city of Spokane. The Department of Transportation, Commerce Department and WSP all sending a strongly worded letter to the city of Spokane, highlighting where they say the city is falling short and passing the buck. So it was on September 9th the state sent WashDOT a letter stating that the department had until October 14th to clear that land. Well, then just days later, WashDOT's Secretary of Transportation sent the city a letter saying a formal plan of action would come at a later date. Well, just hours ago, we received a follow up letter from WashDOT saying that was an unrealistic timeline set by the city and also saying the city has failed in taking responsibility for the continued growth of that camp along I-90 and Freya. We begin now with Krem 2's Mark Hanrahan, who spent the last several hours breaking down that letter from Washot. He's joining us now right here in the studio. Hi, Mark. Good afternoon, Whitney. In the letter, it is clear the state and the city are not on the same page when it comes to clearing out that homeless camp. In fact, the state calls the city's timeline to clear the camp irrational. And listen to this. It also states that the city, starting with the mayor, is more preoccupied by optics than action. So let's take a closer look right now. The letter is a joint statement between the Department of Transportation, the Commerce Department, and the Washington State Patrol. It states the city's deadlines are misleading and unrealistic, writing, quote, not only are these deadlines completely unrealistic, given the scope of this issue and current lack of housing capacity, but without time to provide adequate outreach, it sets up those living within the camp for failures. The state also points out that quick removal of the homeless camp contradicts the right of way safety initiative, which requires local governments to work with WashDOT and Commerce to transition people living on state owned property to safer and more permanent housing. They write, quote, the city's deadlines imply clearing the encampment, which will simply force the most vulnerable to relocate to other city, county, state and private property within the area. Now, the letter continues that following the city's demand solves nothing and finding common ground with the state is what makes sense and what is also legally required. The letter also asserts the city is too focused on being reimbursed by the state for the $350,000 in expenses if they don't clear the homeless encampment by the city's deadline. They say the city has, quote, lost sight of the other $24 million the state invested to address homelessness in Spokane. And given that the state writes, it will not entertain any reimbursement discussions right now. All right, so what's next? The state writes that it wants to partner with the city to work together to resolve the challenges associated with Camp Hope, writing, quote, We know from successful approaches elsewhere in the state that working together with responsible local jurisdictions is an essential ingredient to work to provide safe, secure housing and service solutions for those living homeless. The letter concludes with stating, we look forward to meeting with the city to chart a path forward later this week, and we will certainly keep you posted on that. All right, Mark, thank you very much. And this from the state letter placed a lot of the responsibility for the camp's continued growth at the feet of the city. Creme 2's Janelle Finch is digging deeper tonight. We were the first to speak to Mayor Nadine Woodward this afternoon about her reaction and where the city goes from here. Janelle? The three state agencies are taking aim at the city and Mayor Nadine Woodward, calling out a lack of responsibility when considering Spokane's homeless crisis. Today, I sat down with Mayor Woodward and she tells me the city has been putting in work to do what it can within its means. Mayor Nadine Woodward says her initial reaction to the letter was that she is ready to sit down and further the conversation with the Washington Department of Transportation. In the letter addressed to the city, WashDOT, the Department of Commerce and State Patrol say Spokane has lacked accountability. But Mayor Woodward says the growth of the encampment was, quote, allowed because WashDOT wouldn't do anything about activity on their property, end quote. She says despite the city not owning the land and as a result not being able to move campers at, out at its own journey, jurisdiction, the city has worked in other ways to maintain the camp and surrounding area. Well, that's why we have decided to go in and put dumpsters on the property and remove garbage because it wasn't being done. It's not our property, but we did that. Also private security. It's not our property to secure, but we did that and police overtime. So we've stepped up to do what I believe the state should have been doing on their own property from day one. 
The mayor says since her time in office, homelessness has been an important issue. She says she has been proud of the city's collaboration on the way out, Cannon, and most recently the Trent shelters as a means to address the growing crisis. Still, at last count, over 600 people are living out of their tents and RVs at this encampment, with no indication that they will be moved in the immediate future. The mayor says she already had a meeting scheduled with WashDOT for tomorrow. She says they plan to discuss expectations on how to best move people off the land and into housing. Now following the release of this letter, she says its contents will also be discussed at tomorrow's meeting. In the newsroom, Janelle Finch, Crime 2 News. All right, Janelle, thank you very much. And if you would like to read that full three-page letter from WashDOT, you can find it right now on creme.com. You can also text the word letter to 509-448-2000 and we'll send that link directly to your phone. We're all tired of it. It's got to be gone. So today's development in the form of that letter coming as a big disappointment to neighbors in that area who were hoping the camp would be cleared out soon. They, of course, have been living with increased crime, noise and mess for months, but we wanted to dig even deeper. So we asked, what is it really like living near Camp Hope? I spoke with one woman who doesn't want to be identified, frankly, because she says she worries about retaliation. But she tells me the homeless crisis in Spokane is becoming a crisis for her neighborhood. Early in the morning, it is pretty disgusting when the RVs go around the block before daylight and have the valve to their sewer open to let all that sewage out as they drive around the block. This woman lives less than a block away from what is now known as Camp Hope. She says from the day she moved in less than a year ago, she's had problems. First week I was there, I got batteries stolen off of my vehicles. Everything's getting broken into. But she says nothing is worse than the raw human waste that gets dumped in the streets or sometimes even in front yards. I had an RV parked alongside my house. They just open up the valves. They let it go anywhere. How often does that happen? Uh, it's, it's happening on like two to three times a week wow. or more. But then the city has to come out and clean and then and spray the streets down with bleach. It's pretty disgusting. I've had people that'll just puke all over my lawn or my yard and they don't care and I've reported it and it doesn't do a damn bit of good. She says police do regularly patrol the area and officers have told her to report problems as often as it takes, but she tells me nothing has changed. In fact, she says it's getting worse. The city officers babysitting from 7 a.m. The 7 p.m. is not enough because the minute that those officers leave at 7 p.m., it is fire pits, loud music, partying, a lot of traffic. Every little bit of nuisance that can go on does go on. And she says it's time for the city and the state to do more. I'm tired of being treated like I'm remedial or I'm a nuisance because I call so much because there's so much going on. I don't like that. I'm not going to keep doing it. I think that those people just need to move on. So as the mayor and the state argue about how to handle this growing crisis in the East Central neighborhood, a new illegal camping ordinance takes effect today. People sleeping in tents in certain parts of downtown Spokane and along the Spokane River can now be cited for illegal camping. For the first time in four years, Spokane City Council members voted to update the city's illegal camping ordinance. So here is what's changing. It's now illegal for someone to camp on any public property. It's also illegal to camp under or within 50 feet of a railroad viaduct in downtown police boundaries. Also, people cannot camp within three blocks of a homeless shelter, even if there are no shelter beds available. The ordinance also makes camping along the banks of the Spokane River and the Lataw Creek illegal, but only when shelter space is available. If there's things we can do to keep the entire community safe, I'm going to support that, and we have got to do a better job. So people cited for illegal camping will face a misdemeanor charge and be required to show up to community court. If they do not, a warrant can then be issued for their arrest. This update is to bring this ordinance more in line with the Martin v. Boise ruling. In 2019, the court ruled enforcement of anti-camping ordinances are unconstitutional when there is no shelter space available.
And taking a look at the current status of that new homeless shelter on East Trent, our newsroom did speak with the city of Spokane. They're telling us today that the Trent shelter had 98 people that were being sheltered there. Of those 98, 35 are from that I-90 encampment. So as the city cracks down on illegal camping in the downtown core, some people are worried that they will just then shift campers into neighborhoods. Some neighbors and business owners in Brown's Edition are worried that more homeless camps will now set up in Coeur d'Alene Park and all around the neighborhood. One resident we talked to said he's already seen more campers moving into his area. I don't want to see it get bad in any neighborhood, you know, but it's, you know, these people have to find a place to go, you know, and, and, and they're going to go as close as they can to where they are right now. I think it does have to be enforced to a degree. It causes a lot of problems. So Ron Biggerstaff is the Browns Edition Neighborhood Council Chair. He said they're aware of the homeless people moving into their neighborhood right now. He said he wants to help them find shelters so they can go and find a place to stay. Residents in that area also being told to report code violations when they see them happen. Biggerstaff says they're now working with a neighborhood resource officer to keep anyone dangerous off the streets. And we are continuing our coverage of this growing homeless crisis all around the Inland Northwest. For our latest reporting on its impacts, just text the word HOMELESS to 509-448-2000. In other news tonight, 10 passengers are safe after an airplane crashed and caught on fire at the Tri-Cities Airport this morning. A private plane landed with no landing gear. Take a look. You can see just how much damage was done to that aircraft. All of the passengers, though, made it out safely. Pasco Fire quickly arrived on scene. The airfield did have to close, though, due to debris on the runway, but it was reopened just a few hours later. The Grant County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help to find this missing couple. So take a look at these pictures. They were scheduled to arrive home from the Spokane Airport, but never made it. 53-year-old Teresa Bergmond, her husband, 54-year-old Charles, were both from Moses Lake and arrived at the Spokane Airport after midnight on September 18th. Charles was reportedly going to pick up Teresa, but neither of them returned home. They've both been reported missing by family members the next day. They may be in that 23. 13 Chevy Impala with a Washington plate of BLU 5395. If you have any information, you're asked to please call that number right there at the very bottom of your screen. Today, a Post Falls man was arrested for distribution of child pornography. 29-year-old Travis Jordan Dawson was arrested on three counts of sexual exploitation of a minor by distribution as well as seven counts by possession. This comes after multiple cyber tips had prompted police to investigate his digital devices. And if more is found, additional charges could also be added. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk weather now. We already are seeing some cooler mornings, but still those warm afternoons and lots of sunshine. But certainly we know fall is right around the corner. We want to check in with our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Legoo, joining us now as we talk about this forecast. You said it was going to be a little bit breezier today. I definitely noticed that, Jeremy. Yeah, today and tomorrow wind up looking very similar for us here, Whitney, just because of the wind. Temperatures actually climb slightly as we get into the day tomorrow. Right now we sit at 73 degrees, wind out of the north northeast sustained at 17 miles per hour, gusting to 20, even 25 here in Spokane. Even stronger as you make your way into the Okanagan Valley or over on the west side of the Cascades. For that reason and the dry atmosphere, red flag warnings remain in effect through 7 p.m. tonight. Our wind dies down at that hour and that's when we lose some of that fire danger. Wouldn't be shocked if they came back tomorrow, but notice wind dies down and overnight basically negligible before it starts shifting tomorrow. That allows our temperatures to fall back into the 40s. And then by tomorrow afternoon, we're even warmer than today. Widespread mid to upper 70s, even a couple 80s on there. Coming up in the full forecast, we'll talk when we might see 80 again here in the Inland Northwest. Well, I'm already looking forward to it, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Still to come here on Creme 2 News at 4 tonight, two local groups now working to provide free and low-cost dental service to people in the Hispanic community. We're breaking that down when we come right back.